suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Stoned Appetit. With your host, as always, it's me, Kip, and to my left, I got CB. CB, how are you? I'm doing great, man. We're uh, coming off a really good weather weekend, and we got some pretty cool events ahead this week. Yeah, it's a gauntlet, um, and it's been a couple of weeks since it was just you and I, and really, we have, an, we have a guest joining us for the second part of this episode, but for the first part, I felt we hadn't talked to our listeners in a while, and sometimes we just need to kind of hang out with the community, you know, talk about restaurants we like, things that we're vibing on, you know, we're about to get into winter season, so we have a lot more that's on the docket, you know, maybe holidays. Holiday vibes, and then we'll recap some of the fun shit we've been doing. After that, we're going to have Chef Oscar Padilla from Toro Latin Kitchen, uh, Richard Sandoval Project, and Richard's right hand man come on and talk with us. But before we get this party started, let's just have a little fun. Shout out to our friends over at Seed and Smith. Shout out to our friends over at Cali's Cannabis. You know it. Those are our sponsors. If y'all have any questions about it, slide in our DMs on Instagram. I'm always there. We have a page on Facebook if you care to find it at stoned underscore appetit. Go find us. But otherwise, uh, we love their products. I took it to the mountains this weekend. I take the dart with me everywhere I go. Chicago, Georgetown, doesn't fucking matter. It's been on me everywhere I go. It's like a gun on a fucking Republican in Texas, Chris. I don't go home. I don't leave home without it. It's like a MasterCard in the 80s. <laughs> Those were a hit. Yeah, and then you know we lo- <laughs> shout out to our friends over at Cali's Cannabis. They uh, they did that launch with Green Dot Lab last week. A lot of those that listen to this, if you follow us on social media, you saw that I was gallivanting around just trying to grab all three. It was like a fucking Pokemon adventure. But Cali's obviously was able to take care of us, and you know they'll be able to take care of you over there as well. Whether or not they have the Green Dot flower to this day is probably a toss up. But what I can say is that uh, they have something for everybody. So go check them out. Over They have a location at 31st and Lamer and whatever. All right, Chris, let's do it. Before we get into our guest, let's talk a little bit. It's just been a minute. Let's let's recap. Where are some restaurants you've been hitting on? I think most of our listeners know I went to Georgetown, but I've been talking for a second. So give us a little recap. What have we been missing in Chris's life? Well, I mean, I can't remember we... Uh... You know, I can't remember the last time we were both out of the town, ta- out of town at the same time, which is why we haven't spoken in a couple weeks on the pod. Um, but yeah, so just went down to Alabama to see the folks and go to a game at Tuscaloosa, which a lot of people don't care about. In uh, Tuscaloosa. People tune into this because they like us, Chris. It doesn't necessarily have to be riveting. No one gives a fuck about the. The sister fuckers right. beating up on whomever right. y'all did. It happens. But you probably ate well. Folks would love to reminisce about boiled peanuts, fantastic cornbread, and everything in between. Oh, I would love some fucking boiled peanuts. Uh, unfortunately, a- I could not find those. Um, but yeah, great, great time. Great restaurant. Uh, for all you who have ever been to Birmingham, I highly recommend Hot and Hot Fish Club. Fucking slaps. What kind of food is this? What echelon? Uh, like... White tablecloth or casual? Um, I mean, it would be up there. Uh, they aren't going to have white t- tablecloth, you know, but uh, I would say... Uh, Do people wear collared shirts yes, when they go there? Okay. Yes, I would say it, it's... Do lawyers take their cl- uh, their soon-to-be clients there? Prospectors? They could. It's, they an, could. it's a kind of an upscale restaurant. It's one of those things like if you were flying in somewhere to meet your family and stuff and y'all do like one nice night or yeah, something out, I mean, that's it's what, one of those spots. And that's what we probably need to do an episode on that one time because I have my folks coming in. Uh, my dad and my stepmom will be here in December, and we should give some tips for those that have family coming in because that's a great idea. Right. But what did you have at the fish fish hash, hash house? Uh, uh, so we did cheese and charcuterie, of course, but we had some like local, there's some creameries and things like that in Alabama that are making some, uh, dank fromage. So we had a little bit of that. Um, and then, uh, we, 
like you know, I mean, like the seafood from the Gulf is readily available. So, God, I, I believe my sister food. had like a red snapper dish. I had duck. Anytime I see duck on the menu, you know, I got to get it. It's like you with a uh, shrimp, shrimp and etouffee or shrimp and grits as well. But yeah, any etouffee. Yeah, yeah. But so that's kind of my thing. Like sometimes, I mean, I don't always have to go for it, but most of the time, if there's like duck on there, I'm I'm gonna get it. Who has your favorite duck in Denver? While I got while I got you on the duck train. Ooh, fuck. Uh, fuck a duck. Um, I don't. Ace Eat Serve has a fan ca- fantastic peak. I've been duck. wanting to try that because I've seen where you can like pre order one by like. Let's Tuesdays say tomorrow. And Thursdays, yeah, yeah, you can pick it up on Sunday or something. Fridays and Sundays. Yeah. yeah. And it, it actually seems really affordable with all the uh kind of kit you get. Yeah. Yeah. So I also like Hong that. Kong barbecue. Down there it's right on the other side of Star Kitchen. They have a killer pinking duck as okay. well. Just for those that wanna know of the other spots you can get them. You can get them at China Jade also. Yeah, I don't know. I don't what, know if how did they do the duck down yonder? They did it two ways. They did like a seared duck breast. And then they also did, like, uh, duck confit, like a leg of duck. So it was on there. And they had, like, this uh, vegetable kind of succotash, like a sweet, like more of, like, a fall-style succotash. It was fucking delicious. It was really fucking good. That does sound delicious. And then for dessert, which I found out there's some fucking haters out there. Of dessert? Of this dessert. Oh, okay, they, give it to us. Okay, so it was a carrot cake. Okay, and there I may was be a out scoop. On that. <laughs> there was a scoop of like this pecan, the southern pecan ice cream, which slapped. Did it come with like the buttercream ice cream with pecans in it? Like no, how do you have a was... pecan? Like that would just be like a chunky ball. Oh no, no, it was like pecan flavored. Like yeah, I, I but don't it was know. just like a basic vanilla, like it, as the base mixed in. I don't know how they did it, but it was like pecan flavored ice cream with a carrot cake. It slapped. Really? The carrot cake was a little different than what you expect. Like, it's not that, like, heavy cheesecake frosting, and then you have, like, these big layers where you have, like, bits of carrot and shit in it. Nah, this one was clean as fuck. There was, like, it was, like, small stacks where, so there was, like, six or seven layers in there, you know? And the frosting wasn't, like, over-the-top rich, and it was, it was a little bit more delicate, and it was fucking great. But I know there's haters out there. No, and I would, because of what you described, and I think most folks know a carrot cake as that motherfucker your aunt brings to holidays, or the basic Costco King Supers Kroger version. Which are garbage. Which are, yeah, you get those, like, thick slices of both coconut and random, like, shavings of carrot that yeah. doesn't like and it's kind of how i cook it's the most unprofessional flat it's like it's the least flattering version of this food that's kind of how i am as a cook like different shapes or different size chopped like peppers and everything that's what you get in your everyday run-of-the-mill carrot cake so yeah you will catch some heat heat for that but yeah. i don't hate the the order that sounds like a pretty strong dinner no i mean like see that's what i'm talking about for well, yeah, our viewers can't see it, but it's layered. We'll yeah, we'll post a picture with good. we'll post a, we'll lead with that. Chris um, recaps Alabama. Yeah, there we go. And then one thing that happened that I wasn't too thrilled about is on Sunday before we were headed back before I headed back west, we had time to go get like brunch or whatever. And there's a couple like old school spots that I wanted to hit up. Anyways, parents were like blah blah blah. We ended up going out. And we went to North. And I like was like the chain Italian. Yeah. Or and I was like, motherfucker, like I've got one of those. I don't care about it. Like what you know? And it's just like I wonder how many times that happens with certain people where it's like, Man, I'm home. I want to go to something that you can't get anywhere else, and then you end up at fucking a chain restaurant. Chris, I've got some terrible news to tell you. I think this happened to you on your trip. It did. Um so I, for those that haven't heard, I went to Chicago two weeks ago, and we were on somebody else's schedule. You know, Morgan was in the wedding, and so we had other plans the whole time. Like, And we were out in, like, Chainville. But before we left, we were able to eat one place in Chicago, and it was not my choice. And so it was Happy Camper. We had the original Happy Camper, or one of them, I don't fucking know. 
in Wrigleyville. And then, so like all of the recommendations I got for Chicago and shout out to Jim Graziano and the team at Al Cheval. I'm sorry I wasn't able to make it. I'll come back, uh, once the city thaws. I heard winter is struck, but I was out in like Chainville. So yeah. I mean, I wasn't complaining by any means. Chicago was a gorgeous place, but Chris, you mentioned the duck, and so I have to give a shout out and roll it into my weekend this past weekend, which was I went to Georgetown. I think you can see it on our social page. We're going to have Sam on the podcast to talk about it. It's going to be awesome, but Sam Giannis is a Chicagoan that owns a – it's not a b and B. It's just a small, quaint – in and he has four rooms that are bad motherfucking ass um he has a liquor license and he has a gnarly back patio he's got a fucking elevated hot tub on the second deck so you can overlooking the creek that it runs by creek for those in the northeast um so it was sick and he took us out to dinner one night and it was just duck, Chris. You would have been in fucking heaven. I followed that. I saw that. You I saw, saw that? There was some duck poutine. And some pot pie. Duck and some pot, pot pie. Yeah. I mean, it was duck heavy, and boy, it delivered. Like, you're, if you're a slut for duck, I'm just one level below that now more than ever. Just because every time you hear of a new variation, like, everyone knows the confit because it's world renowned. And it's fucking delicious and rightfully so. But each way, I just see it in a different way. Like Turduncan, as we get here closer to, you know, you can find all sorts of ways to uh, incorporate duck into the regular dish. And I mean, it was sultry. How how, how was the uh, crust on the uh, pot pie there? It was flaky crust. Like it, so it almost had like, as someone who watches Great British Baking Show quite regularly, there was a lot of folds. There was a lot of folds. <laughs> Love and, the folds. I mean, that's what they look for. And it was buttery. Um, it was delish. And then obviously I got the shrimp and grits. They called them tiger shrimp. They didn't really. They should have been seared a little bit harder. Is my mm-hmm. theory. Give it a little texture so that it sits above a bowl of creamy grits. Right. But I mean, I respect them using the term grits instead of polenta and trying to pass it off for like twenty eight dollars. It was moderately priced. It was really good. I mean, we ate everything. But our dessert, and we'll find some haters on this one, too, because this is about as basic B as I have ever gotten. And it looked like it, too. This pumpkin cheesecake, Chris, (laughs) I'm telling you right now, if I had to run over a child to get to it, I would. It was that good? Yeah. Uh, it was fucking unbelievable. Like, I'm surprised I shared it with Morgan. It was that good. Was it? It was that good. Was it stock from Costco? By God, it may have been. As we know on this podcast, Costco is a Michelin star reviewed restaurant in our hearts. And they, Kirkland brings A plus products from sweatpants to beer, NASCARs, broccoli Great cheese thoughts. soups. <laughs> Hello, Christmas gifts. It could have been their stock Costco pumpkin cheesecake, but I was in the butter zone. And so for the haters out there, we're going to have to ask what is the most. Hated cake? What's the best cake? Is yours, is carrot seasonal? I think you can do carrot really anytime Year you want, but I feel like it, it, was, it seems like it this is the time. It made an appearance at Easter and church kind of events. Ooh, too. it does make an you appearance know, it's there. because bright color. And, yeah. Okay. We're going to have to figure out what's the most hated dessert out there. Because you know who, pro- people probably hate flan too. Yeah. The texture on flan though is shitty. Yeah. Like, I wonder what's the worst store-bought cake. You know, like... Like your basic... You know, yeah, flavor. like the carrot cake with the big fucking orange carrot on the top. Like, and it just looks... <laughs> That's what I think of when yeah. you say carrot yeah, cake. Yeah, exactly. That's what everybody thinks of. It looks like a crepe cake, and yeah. it looks wonderful. I mean, it, yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. What would you put in your pantheon of shitty dessert, store-bought sh- desserts? Uh, Let me see... You know what? Like store bought, store bought red velvet cakes don't do it for me. That shit's garbage. I can believe that, and that's just a chocolate cake with red food dye. But it, I can understand it. it's not necessarily an aversion, but it, they're I think just it's so their frosting. Fucking, yeah, that's what it is. It's the worst. Like when they are, it's just so heavy and so right. dense. It's bad. I'm trying to think of what other cakes and or pies. Um, you know, I don't with know if I've ever gotten a pie from there from a Safeway though. 
Usually, yeah, do you remember the cookie have, cakes in the mall? Cookie cakes, those with the, the And that icing was welcomed on top of that chocolate chip. Yeah, sometimes Man. it got a little heavy because it was so dry. Yeah. You know, depending on. Or if you got one of those small middle squares because it was cut tavern style. 